Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing really well. This is the Sunday show where I'll take you through nine of my very best sold sales items on eBay and on Facebook Marketplace. International postage is one thing that I wanted to have a bit of a chat about to you today. I've turned it on on my eBay store for the very first time. It's only taken me seven months to realize that it's probably a good thing to do. A few more eyeballs for your items. And uh, I've had a few sales come through. So let's talk about that today. Quick update as well on my van. Um, the van. It, it got stolen. For those of you out there that didn't find out uh, in Thursday's trip to the thrift episode when I touched on it, um, it is fully insured. It's been nine days. I'm yet to hear from the police, so I do believe it's gone. Unfortunately, I will be on the lookout for another van, um, and I'll bring you that information. I'll bring you that van when I do buy it. Hey, thank you very much for the support around that as well. The, the comments and the messages that I've received on eBay, uh, not on eBay, but on YouTube and on uh, and Instagram, I should say, um, very much appreciated. So thanks very much for that. Featured reseller of the week as well, guys. I'll give you my weekly sales notes. Numbers, nine great items to take you through. Let's get into it. Righto, guys. So I'm going to kick things off with this leather jacket. It was a super dry vintage leather jacket. This was an incredible find in the thrift. I've paid $30 for it. It did have a 78-day sales cycle before it finally moved. But I did want to quickly touch on the fact that it is okay to buy at a slightly higher price if you know you can get some good resale value for it. I started this one out at 200 bucks on eBay. It did sit around for a little bit. Uh, I had a lot of watches on it, so I knew there was some genuine interest at that price point. And in the end, I took a best offer. It sold for 100 and sixty dollars, guys. No doubt, the greatest uh, clothing sale I've personally ever had. To sell a single item of clothing for one hundred and sixty bucks is a pretty good result for myself. Uh, postage and fees. I've ended up profiting a hundred and one dollars on this single item of clothing. So I talk about the Super Dry brand quite a bit here, guys. It is a good brand to get your hands on if you can find it out in the thrift, and don't be afraid to pay a little bit more if you know you can get full price for it. Now, last week's episode of the trip to the thrift, just last Thursday, if you're yet to check it out, go and do so now because it was a heap of thrifted finds. 62 items were secured. Uh, I've been able to find this Sydney Roosters windbreaker in that hall. It was a size large, it was immense. Uh, it was in very, very good condition. A couple of marks on it, which I highlighted on eBay, but the unfortunate one with this one is I think I slightly went unders on the price. The minute you get a sale in the first 30 minutes, like I did with this item, you kind of cringe a little bit because you know you've probably underpriced it. Um, it's ended up selling for $69.99 and I think I could have pushed upwards of 100 bucks for this one if I'm honest. So I probably sold myself about 30% short here, but take out fees, take out postage, I've still profited $51 because in that haul, I only paid $2 for this windbreaker. A really nice vintage rugby league Sydney Roosters windbreaker jacket. Uh, probably went a little bit under there at 70, should have gone 100 as I mentioned. So look at the end of the day, the profit is profit and it did move in a very quick space of time. Um, so I'll learn the lesson and we'll move on. Another item from that recent trip to the thrift episode was this Palmeiras football club jersey. Now this is a Brazilian football league jersey and I was really curious to see how this one would go. I did pay $12 for it in the thrift and it was actually the very first sale I had on my new website www.thehouseofmumba.com.au. I've built this website only very recently to try and connect with you guys here on YouTube, the viewers, the subscribers of the channel. I'm basically doing 20% discount on this website for you guys if you were interested in purchasing anything from my recent Trip to the Thrift episodes. I'll be uploading that entire haul onto the website and you'll be able to buy it at a reduced rate to what it would be on eBay. This was the first sale that I was able to get out of it. $45 was the sale price. So $7.56 for postage. I've ended up profiting $25 and 44 cents, which is pretty common for a footy jersey. So next day sale, great way to kick off the website. Check it out, links are in the description below. Now for the regular viewers of this channel, you might have remembered the purchase that I made off Facebook Marketplace. I did a video around a massive PlayStation 2 bundle purchase. I ended up splitting out two different console packages and a whole heap of accessories and Guitar Hero guitars left over. Finally, one of the PlayStation 2 console packages has gone on to sell on eBay. I say finally, it was only a 14 day sales cycle. This is a very fast moving item to be honest. It's ended up selling for $218.95. So I've ended up calling the split on this is about a $50 worth of purchase. Um, so take out fees and postage. I've profited on this specific bundle, $117.33. So a fantastic result, guys. I really do think if you want to source for something on Facebook Marketplace, it is pretty common and, and sort of a really good turnaround from a, a profit perspective. I, I think video game consoles and games, controllers, anything that you can get your hands on in this category is a really good item to focus on from a Facebook Marketplace sourcing perspective. Let me know in the comments, do you do that yourself? And if you haven't done it, are you interested in giving it a go? Because I really do think you should. There'd be some really good money to be made. 
All right, now I did touch on that I had a few international postage uh, sales. So here was one of them. It was a Brisbane Lions 2005 members hat. Now I've paid just a dollar for it. You often see in the op shops these $1 hat bins. Well, I just rummaged through the bin and I just found this random hat that I thought I could get for about 20 bucks on eBay locally here in Australia. I've put international postage on every single one of my items in my eBay store around about the $30 price point. I've just allocated a $30 cost. It's probably not the best way to do it, but I just want to test the waters and get things going. So I've put $30 for postage anywhere anywhere around the world for this item. And somebody's bought it in the US. So they've paid the full 20 bucks and they've paid $30 to have it shipped to them. I believe with my Australia Post My Business discount, it'll probably end up costing me about $18 to ship it to the US. So when you take out the fees, I've profited $24.50 on this Brisbane Lions 2005 members hat. So it's amazing what could actually go on to sell, even internationally, amazing what people will actually pay on a sense of postage for a certain item. A 29 day sales cycle, $24.50, for this Brisbane Lions members hat. Here's another item that's going off to the US. It was these men's GT2000 running shoes. Now these are a very good pair of shoes and the reason why I buy running shoes is because when they're in brand new condition out of the store, they could be anywhere between two to $300. So I've paid just $5 for them and I've listed them up for $60 on eBay plus. $30 for anybody that wanted to buy it internationally. And I've had somebody from the US confirm purchase. $99.99 was the overall sales price. I've ended up setting this one off for $24 for international shipping. The fees were $12.99 and I've profited $57.98. So look, it's sold in the space of just two months. My average sales cycle is about 26 days. So this was slightly over, but they are a great pair of shoes. And I knew if I could hold out for the $60 worth of sale price, I was probably going to get a buyer at some point. So it pays to hang around and hold out for the top dollar. Certainly the case here with this one, 60 days, $100 for a pair of men's running shoes. Off to the States. Next item up, guys, are these Total 90 men's Nike football boots. Now, I talk about footy boots a lot. Ever since I bought these, the reason why I don't believe they've gone on to sell in a fast space of time is because they had metal studs. And if you're trying to source thrifted footy boots out in the community, Try not to buy the metal studs because these have had a 182 day sales cycle and I think that is the reason as to why. A lot of clubs, a lot of leagues out there that don't allow the metal footy boots to be used. So in the end, these have finally sold, which I was very happy to see. I did pay 40 in the thrift, but they did go on a sell for $134.99. So these ones are heading off to New Zealand, um, $18 worth of postage. The fees are $17.54 and uh, I've profited $59.45 with this one. So really happy to just get it out the door. Like I said, I won't be touching with the metal studs in the sense of football boots again. Um, I just don't think many people are out there looking for them. Now here's another item that had a slightly longer sale cycle as well, but I think there's some reasons as to why. It was the Lange uh, ski boots. These were men's ski boots that I've had for 218 days. Now I've only paid $5 for them. They were in incredibly good condition. And I think there were two reasons as to why these have held for 218 days. I bought them straight after the Aussie winter period had ended. I didn't have international postage on either. And uh, the coronavirus had hit. So no one was out there skiing. No one was out there looking for a new pair of ski boots. So these have just sat in my place uh, for quite a while now, but um, I knew that once the opportunity presented itself, the winter time came around, restrictions lifted on the virus, that these would probably go on to sell. And uh, $140 was the final sale price. They've only cost $15.35 to ship. It was somebody locally here in Australia for these ones. Fees were $18.20 and I've profited 100 bucks, basically, 101.45. So a few reasons reasons as to why it's a 218 day sales cycle. I don't think that is the average for people buying ski boots on eBay. And I think it's a great item to thrift when you're out there if you do find them in good condition. So um, yeah, good one to get, $100 worth of profit. Guys, if you see this item out in the thrift, buy it because it's a guaranteed winner for you on eBay. It was the logo board game. Now, this one is such a common board game that I've seen a number of times out in the thrift and uh, I pick it up every time I see it and it sells in a fast space of time on eBay. I've paid $6 for it on this occasion and it sold for $44.99. It's one of those proven performance winners. They just sell fast. So if you can find it, you're almost guaranteed 
guaranteeing yourself some pretty quick profit. Um, fees of 584, I've ended up profiting $17.80. And I think that's pretty much accurate. I think you're gonna make about 20 bucks generally on the way op shops price their board games. Uh, a 31 day sales cycle, so it did move in a pretty quick space of time. What I will say for this item, if you can find one that says second edition along the top there, along the banner, um, they can go upwards of about 100 bucks, 80 to 100 bucks. So it's a great board game to look out for if you can find the second edition, you will make a few more, but even on the standard edition, uh, you're gonna make some too. So there you have it guys, they were my nine best sold sales items of the week. I had three international postage sales in there this week. I think overall there were about six or seven international sales that I had. So um, look, I think it's been a huge benefit turning that on this week and I'm very interested to see how that goes moving on further down the line. Uh, we'll dive into our featured reseller of the week now. And this week we are highlighting Paul, the flipping sports guy on YouTube and on Instagram. Go and check him out, guys. He's only been around for a short period of time, but he is absolutely flying here on YouTube. He's up to about 378 subscribers. So go and give him a follow and uh, watch a few of his videos. He does a live every Thursday. He does a quick thrift Thursday video as well, which is a really good format, I think, here on YouTube to have shorter form video, something that I'm starting to pay a little bit more of attention to. Um, but he's growing really well and he's and he's improving with his videos every single day and he's loving the reselling game. Um, so go and give him a follow. He's got a really cool sale as well that I wanted to touch on, something that I would like to look for from a, uh, a retail arbitrage perspective uh, or even obviously if he can find it in the thrift. It was the diecast police car that he's been able to find and um, bought this for a very low price, around the $5, listed it up for 80 bucks and within the space of just a couple of hours, he's gone on to sell this one for $65 as you can see there plus postage. So so these I know from looking at people on Instagram quite a bit and, uh, and other YouTube videos, these things do sell, die cast cars, those sorts of things. They are quick moving items. I know a lot of people do it from a retail arbitrage perspective. Um, personally, yet to do it myself, but a very good item to be on the lookout for if you can get the right ones. So Paul's clearly done that. He's made a stack of profit there on that one. You've seen the details for his YouTube and his Instagram. So go and check him out. Paul, you're our featured reseller of the week, mate. Well done. All right, guys, let's dive into my weekly sales numbers to let you know how I've been going this week. Now, I will quickly say before we pull up the grid, I've actually put a few more details into this week's um, numbers. I really wanted to capture literally everything to give you a full look. I've, I've kind of been a bit blasé, I think, with the limited numbers that I've been showing you on a weekly basis with these episodes. So let's pull up the new and improved grid and uh, we'll give you a look at the numbers. Um, guys, this week I've been able to sell 52 items, which I think is my second or third best ever sales week. I think my best was a little over 60 a couple of weeks ago. Uh, total revenue, total money in for the business this week, $2,327.19. When you take out the cost of goods to get that number, $333 uh, was the result. Now the fees guys, that worked out to about 15%. Um, so $315 and uh, postage costs, $635 because there was a bit of international postage in there this week. Uh, gross profit guys, $1,041. So look, I'm really happy because I always like to do a thousand dollars worth of profit. A thousand bucks over the course of a year is 52,000 in profit. Um, what I'm not taking into account here with these numbers is what I'm actually buying on an inventory perspective that is yet to go on to sell. This week I spent $325 in my only trip to the thrift episode as well on Thursday. Um, in the end overall for the course of the week I spent about 500 bucks. So my true net figure is about $500 really, um, which isn't too bad. It wouldn't normally be that high of a standard week, but it was just a, a, a quite a large sourcing week from a dollar perspective. Um, so in the end, I'm, I'm still really happy with the way things have gone this week. I'm really happy with international postage. Let me know in the comments below, do you currently do international postage yourself? And if you're not, do you wanna learn about it and do you wanna do it? Because what I wanna say here is that by doing it this week, I've had seven more sales than I would normally have had I think it was about seven sales. I need to go in and double check, but I just had a lot come in in a very short space of time. You know, you're talking about one a day internationally, which you just simply don't have if you're not turning it on. So look, I wasn't really sure how to go about it because I am still very much inexperienced when it comes to the international postage. And I am curious as well around the weight scenario. I don't wanna have some big and bulky item needing to go internationally and get burnt on price. So mainly my shoes and my clothes, I've just blanketed out at about a $30 price for international postage. And I'm 
yet to be burnt on any of the sales that I've been able to make. And uh, I'm just really pleased and thankful that you know people out there are happy to spend $50 for a Brisbane Lions 2005 hat to somebody over in the US. Um, you know, buying that for a dollar, I would not have thought that that would have been able to sell for $50, including all that postage cost. So look, there are a lot of buyers out there all around the world. You're really cutting off 85% of the market if you're not turning it on. And uh, it's only taken me seven months of being full time to realize that. So um, glad that I've turned it on. Glad that I'm making sales. Thought I would bring it to you in today's episode. Let's get the conversation started around international postage in the comments. It'd be great to get your feedback. Thank you very much for tuning into this episode. Go and check out the new website that I've just made. Put a bit of time and effort and energy into that one, www.thehouseofmumba.com.au. Appreciate you tuning in, guys. Hope you've had a really good week yourself. Look forward to catching you in the next episode on Tuesday. We'll see you soon. Thank you.